Everyone just worship God and bless his name. He is worthy to be praised. He is worthy to be exalted. There is none like you, Jesus. I sing praises to your name. Oh Lord, praises to your name. Oh Lord, for your name is great. Please to can you sing please? I, I sing, sing praises to your name. Celebration Center Church. Everybody can take your seats in Jesus' mighty name. We thank God for this day. It's a good day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Once again, we are still proceeding with our main topic, which says soaring or discovering who you are in God. Lift up your hand and say, I have to discover 
my position in God. Come on, everybody, I want to hear you say it. I will have to discover my position in God. I have to discover who I am in God. In Jesus' name. Yeah, so let's open up uh, our Bibles in the book of Genesis chapter 1 and verse 28. Someone reading English, please, can you quickly do that? Genesis chapter 1 and verse 28. Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. Sorry. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Can you repeat that, that Nani again? Genesis chapter 1 verse 28 says, God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Amen. We are going to study uh, or we're going to expound more on our topic. This time, the subtopic is the power of transformation. The power of transformation is our subtopic that we are going to uh, study or we are going to learn today in Jesus' name. Power of transformation. We can also say power of innovation. We can say power of venturing, power of exploring. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we want to thank you for this time. As we are going to share the word of God, we are still expounding on soaring, mounting higher. We pray that your spirit will continue to speak to us. We pray that your presence will be sufficient, O oh God. We pray that as we share this word, our lives are going to be blessed. Our lives are going to be transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, whoever is watching and whoever is here, let, us, our, let our spirits be ignited to another level in Jesus' mighty name. We thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody say amen. Shout amen. amen. Now, uh, according to the scripture that we have just read, it is talking about uh, God telling, uh, speaking and saying that let mankind be fruitful and multiply. Amen. Look at your neighbor and tell him be fruitful and multiply. Say it again. Be fruitful and multiply. Now, when it talks about being fruitful and multiplying, it doesn't only talking, talk about uh, giving birth to 10 kids, 20 children, or having a lot of children uh, like a kraal in your house. That's not the only thing that God is talking about. When he talks about being fruitful, multiplication, he's talking about exploration. He's talking about innovation. He's talking about transformation. You have to use what is around you to better your life. You have to make good use of what is around you. Amen? Yeah, so when he says be fruitful and multiply, he's in other words saying that make life better. Use whatever is around you to make something better in your life. Amen? So when many people always mistake it to only be giving birth and giving as many children, that's why we have those people in one of our religion, other religions that say they have to give birth to as many children as possible. But also we have to give birth to ideas. We have to give birth to innovation. We have to give birth to things that are going to change our lives, that are going to change our status quo. If people were not giving birth to ideas, the world wouldn't be where it is right now. 
it took someone to give birth to an idea and that's why we have internet and we are able to connect to people who are in homes and they watch us. It took an idea for someone to give it birth or to give birth to an idea. That's why you see aeroplanes can fly. That's why cars are existent. Before that idea, people used to walk on foot. You remember when John Speak was coming here in East Africa, uh, when whoever came, Sir Samuel Baker, those who came to Uganda, they had to foot from Mombasa to here. They had to walk on foot to reach here. By that time, nobody had given birth to an idea of a car, of a plane. They had to use ships from England to come to Mombasa. It takes them months to reach because there was poverty in innovation. People were poor in innovating. But as time went on, people began to discover, they began to innovate, and life began to become better. So God gives us the ability to innovate. He gives us the ability to discover. He gives us the ability to, to expound on what he has. Everything that can change life is with us. But we just have to understand how can we apply it. Can you imagine that even the, 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 the minerals that manufactured machines were there in the times of Kabaka, Sir Edward Mutesa I, yet they could not manufacture. They were there in the times of Queen Victoria, whoever was there before, but yet they used to ride on horses. There were no engines until people began to innovate, until people began to put their brains to work. They began to discover new ideas. They began to apply the law of physics. They began to apply the law of aerodynamics. They began to apply the law of chemistry. And things began to change. That's why we, you see we can have internet today. But if you brought, uh, <clears throat> whom can we bring? If you brought Isaac Newton, the man who had very good powerful points in physics, and you ask him about internet, he does not understand. He cannot fit in this generation because he lived in a generation where people were poor in innovation. He was a king among the entire world. By discovering laws of physics, he became a king. Today, if he comes with the same style, he will be outdated because there are many, many people. People have advanced far beyond what he discovered. Amen? Yeah, so when God says, let us be fruitful and multiply, God wants us to become innovative. God wants us to discover more things. God wants us to get more deeper. Use our minds, use our brains, use what God has put around us to change the lives of people. If you understand me, say amen. The day mankind will stop innovating, that's the day we shall sterilize. If they had not discovered guns, up to today we, should, we would be using swords to fight. If they had not discovered cars, up to today we will be riding on horses. If they had not discovered airplanes, up to today we will just be dreaming and imagining whether there are other nations like America. Because you can't go there. How will you, how will you go? How will you cross the Atlantic Ocean? Praise the name of Jesus. Lift up your hand and say, Jesus, help me to be fruitful. Now, uh, there's a, this point I want us to understand, when God, when God was creating, he never created anything else. For example, when God was creating, he created a tree. Everybody said God created a tree. But God never created a chair. God never created a sofa set. Amen? God never created a table. He created the tree. Now, who has transformed the tree into a sofa set? It's man. So it, however much you pray and fast, the tree will never change from a tree to a sofa set. You have to use your brain to transform that. Amen? Tell your neighbor, the table came after man. <clears throat> Amen? So God just did one thing. He created a tree. Number two, God created minerals. He created iron. He created gold. He created uh, vermiculi. He created all those sophisticated. He created mercury. He created the forces and the laws of physics. And he put them on earth. So it is man's duty to discover them and put them to use. Somebody say amen. amen. Lift up your hand and say, Jesus, give me the ability to discover. Amen. If God hands you if you, are, you have been handed over a child, 
Imagine if you have a child or you've been handed over uh, a ministry or you've been handed over a family. What do you have in your brain? How do you want to transform that? Every child, for example, like that child that Maria has, is a child, but God has put, him, put her in, his, in her hands. So he has to, to think of how that child will become. Amen? If he, she just sits down and just relaxes, the child will grow with the storms of life and we don't know how she will end. The wind of this world will drive her. But if she stands in her life and trains her and leads her, that child will come out to be a better person. That's why the Bible says train a child and when he grows, he will not, he will not depart from those ways. Amen? Somebody say amen. amen. God gave an elephant weight. Everybody say God gave an elephant weight. And he, its weight is its form of defense. When you look at the elephant in its weight, it is defended like that. Amen? God gave a lion the roaring voice. And when a lion roars, every other thing is terrified. Amen? God gave a cheetah the speed. That is its defense. When a cheetah begins to run, you can never catch it. It's the, one of the fastest animals. I think it's the fastest in the world. Amen? And God gave, God gave an ego the ability to soar in the air. That's his defense. When the ego is in the air, it is the king of the birds. And then finally, God gave man the brain. Everybody said the brain. Man's defense is the brain. Your brain is your defense. You have to use your brain to create an environment of safety before you. Thank God that he did not create you as an elephant. Look at your neighbor and tell him, thank God you are not an elephant. <clears throat> Because with all the other huh, features on other animals, it's only the brain that is the master of all of them. Because with the brain, the man can control an elephant. With the brain, man can control every lion. That's why you see lions are in zoos, lions are where, lions are in cages. It is because of the power of a brain. Man knew uses his brain and he say, the only way I can protect myself from this lion is putting pillars and putting it there, locking it for good. So however strong a lion is, it will never come out of the cage. Praise the Lord. Or to fence off the game parks and put electric, electric fences so that the lion can never cross to the area where man is. Somebody say amen. So God has given us the brain for what? For innovation. For exploring. For discovering. Your brain has a lot of deposit and it can change your life. Lift up your hand and say, Lord, give me the ability to use my brain. Say it again. Give me the ability to use the brain. Now, some of us are praying so hard for God to bless you, but God has blessed you with a brain. God has blessed you with ideas. God has blessed you with innovation. Use your brain with the grace of God upon your life and you'll see you'll go very far. How many people are praying and fasting today and they're asking God to give them chairs? Lord, I need a chair. You are fasting and praying, but you, want, you need what? That's the problem with church. We are praying for the wrong things. We are praying for the wrong answers. Father, I need a chair. Give me a chair. And God is looking at you. He says, I've given you the tree. Amen. Look at your neighbor and tell him, stop, asking, stop praying the wrong prayers. God, make me a chair. God, make me a sofa set. You pray and fast. You fast. A sofa set, Lord. A sofa set. And God is waiting for you. He has I've enriched your brain. I've enriched your brain. Use your brain. Praise the Lord. So that's why sometimes it's good to pray, but you have to pray with wisdom. You have to pray with understanding. There are some things you don't need to pray. You just need to apply. For example, if you are a woman in a house, sometimes when you have problems in your family, you don't need to pray. You just need to apply tricks. 
Amen. Lift up your hand and say, Lord, help me to pray the right prayer. <clears throat> Can you imagine when you're going to God and you're asking him to, to give you that, that chair or to give you this platform? God, Rwanda, I have given you everything. What do you need from me? So let us stop praying wrong prayers and let us pray the right prayer. Use your brain to create wonders. Amen? Use your brains to create what you want. Use your brain to create a good environment. They can, that's why they can put you in a bush. But after two years, when they come back, they will find there a mansion built in that bush. But if they put a cow in the same bush, after two years, they will still find the same bush and more dirtier. Why? Because the brain is not with the cow. The brain is with you. Amen? Get, uh, get a, a, a pig, a very good pig, and put it in Kololo and give it a, a, a plot in Kololo. Come back after one year, you'll find that that plot has been messed up. More dirtier than you gave it to it. But get a human being and put, it, put him there. After two years when you come back, you can find there a skyscraper. That's the power of the brain, power of innovation. So, as we, as we saw, as we believe God to saw, we must use our brains. We must allow ourselves to discover that which God has put in us. Somebody say amen. amen. Lift up your hand and say, Jesus, help me to use my brain. Say it again. Help me to use my brain. Hmm? Hallelujah. <clears throat> so, envision. Envision. See. Your miracle is not in what has passed. Your miracle is in what is before you. Don't look for your blessing in the past. Look for your blessing in what is before you. What you lost is not where your blessing is. What is before you is what carries your blessing. So stop living in a party of pity. Stop saying, I wish if I had not lost this, if I, they had not done this to me, if they had not stolen this, oh, I would have been better. No. Thank God that you have the gift of life. Use what is before you to change your life. Use what God has given you to change your environment. Somebody say amen. So stop saying, if I was not born in this kind of clan, if I was not born in this village, if I did not come from this side, if I had not, if I'd gone to school, or if I'd had a better parents, you know, many people have those kinds of fantasies, but God never makes a mistake. He makes everything beautiful. He has placed you in that place for a reason. Whatever challenge that comes to you, God has already in, put in you some resistance that can fight it off. Whatever problem that is in your family, God has given you the answer. It's right in the middle of you. Amen? Whatever situation that you are facing, right where that situation is, there is a solution. You just have to be very keen to look and know that this is what the Lord has prepared for me. So don't look for your, for your breakthroughs in your past. Someone may have stolen you. Someone may have cheated you. Now that is in the past. Move on. The, there are great things ahead of you. There are best days ahead of you. Everybody say, I have better days ahead of me. Pastor Robert Kanja sings a song and sings, says, I'm going to have the best days of my life until Jesus comes again. Amen? I'm going to have the best days. Yes, I've had the worst nightmares, but now I begin the best days. Look at your neighbor and tell him, I begin my best days. Yes, I've gone through hell and high waters, but now I begin my best days. Yes, I've been rejected for so long, but now I begin my best days. Yes, I've lived in poverty all my, all my life before, but now poverty must lose my address. Praise the Lord. Believe that what is before you can change your life. If you never went to school, that is not a point. You can prosper and employ those who went to school. You can prosper and become a solution. You can give jobs and contracts to those who studied. Lift up your hand and say, Jesus, help me to understand my best days. Amen. Now, I want us to move to the next point. I don't know how many minutes I have, but I want us to move to this next point. You know, this morning I woke up at around four in the night and I was enjoying the presence of God and also enjoying what I was, I was 
studying. Amen. <clears throat> now, uh, this, this is a point I want us now to drill on. Number two. Is it number two? Whatever number. If you are going to soar, then you have to break the law of gravity. Look at your neighbor and tell him, if I am going to soar, then I must break the law of gravity. Now we have gone into physics and science. Tell your neighbor, we are now in physics. We are talking about soaring, right? We are talking about mounting up. It is not just in dreams. It's not just in words. There are things you have to do to soar. For an eagle to fly or a bird to soar, there are, there, are, there are laws that it defies. There are laws that it breaks. And it is able to fly. Amen? So for us to fly, for us to soar, as Isaiah 40, 29 says, we must break some laws. Tell your neighbor, get ready to break some laws. The law of gravity is the law, a normal law of the land. Is the normal law of your clan. Is the normal law in the area. Is the normal law in your community. There is a law that rules in your community. And it says, There is a law that rules in your family. And it says, Nobody will buy a car in this family. There is a law that says, There is a law that rules where you come from. But if you want to sow, as the Bible says, get ready to defy that law in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. amen. Look at your neighbor and tell him, neighbor, if you think you are still st stuck, then understand one thing. You have not yet defied the law. Amen? The Bible says, they that wait upon the Lord shall mount up with wings as he goes. They shall fly. They shall soar. Eh? I believe I can fly. I believe I can touch. It. Oh, those are just wishes in words. You have to convert them into action and reality. How do you do that? There is a law that says here people will never fly. Here people will never prosper. Here people will always fail. Here people will always be beggars. Here people will always remain on a standard. For example, there is a law that is covering the whole of Africa. That in Africa, there will never be, the wealth of Africa will have a limit. However much they tell us the richest man in Africa. Once you compare him to the rest of the world, he's just a pauper. That's the law that is covering the continent of Africa. Prosperity is still a problem in Africa. Breakthroughs are still a problem. Innovation is still a problem. There is a law that covers. I don't know which law is covering in your family. But God has sent me to tell you that if you want to sow, then you have to defy that law. Somebody say amen. For example, when we talk about the law of flying, how did the planes begin to fly? Tell your neighbor, how did planes begin to fly? Yesterday I was watching, uh, I was watching a, a, those old and funny movies. And they were showing how they, they had the first plane. These guys built their plane. Actually, when you read the Wright brothers, those are the people who invented the plane. They were the first people to fly a plane in the world. They are called the Wright brothers. They built the first plane using bicycle, bicycle equipment. And they did it from the bicycle repair plant. That's the first plan. They didn't have to wait and say, oh, we need a plant. We need materials. We need aluminium. We need this and that. Otherwise, a plane will never fly. We need to have a big warehouse. We need to have uh, fuel. They never waited for resources. Resources met them going forward. Resources met them innovating. Resources met them discovering. Stop waiting for resources to change your life. Start with what you have and the rest will find you on the way. Look at your neighbor and tell him, stop waiting for help. Start with what you have and the rest will get you on the way. Praise the Lord. 
the Wright brothers built their first plane in a shack of a bicycle place. But they, what, what was the secret? They had to discover how they could defy the law that rules the land. And that is the law of gravity. How do we defy the law of gravity? Now, the law of gravity, for us to understand it simply, it is the force that pulls you down to this earth. When you throw, according to the law of gravity, whatever goes up must come down. Whatever is thrown up must do what? You can never throw a pen and it remains in the air. No, that one can never happen on this earth because of the law of gravity. You can never jump from a high building and you just float. It doesn't happen on this earth. Tell your neighbor, it doesn't happen on this earth. Yeah? It is a law. It can never happen on this earth. There is a law in your family that says, one of this can never happen. The moment you try to get money, all the demons in your clan will come against you. Here, but na wete mete bakula akula na. This place, tell your neighbor, which law are you fighting? Ask your neighbor, which law are you fighting? <laughs> eh, people are fighting laws here. They are fighting laws. They are laws holding their necks. Hey, see it all, Jaita. See it all, Jaita. Toita. Look at anybody and tell him, Tonda Bakuim, Banewa, which take a chin one and a cho. Praise the Lord. <laughs> so, the law on this earth is there is nothing that can go up and remain there, it must come down. You get your iPad or get your thing. Brag around and say, me, I'm very, I'm different. I throw things in the air and they remain there. Eh? I'm a cowboy, never die. If I die, I never own ya. When I throw things in the air, they remain there. <laughs> so there is that law that people, nothing should remain in the air. It should come back to the ground. As you try to jump, go back. As you try to come out, go back. As you try to excel, go back. So what did the Wright brothers do in order to defy the law of gravity? They sat down and began to think. They began to discover that no matter how gravity has defied and held things on earth, there must be a way to defy this law. Look at your neighbor and tell him, there is a way that you can defy the law in your home. Praise the Lord. According to the law of physics, and that's the law of Newton, the Wright brothers began to discover and they know that if an image is moving or if an object is moving and it is interfered with another force, it can easily rise. Amen? So they began to add the laws of physics and they understood that where there is speed, there can be an escape velocity. There can be a, an, an opening where you can escape gravity. Praise the Lord. Lift up your hand and say, Jesus, give me the grace to escape the earth gravity, the clan gravity, hmm? the ancestral gravity. Some of us are going through problems because of the ancestral gravity. It was declared in your home and it has been like that. The time has come to defy the law of gravity. Somebody say amen. <clears throat> amen? Every time they try to, do some, to throw something up, these guys, it would come down. So they said, how can we make something stay in the air? They began to, to read the Newton law of physics. And they understood that where speed is, speed, because gravity can be escaped at a particular speed. When you reach a particular speed, you will automatically escape the earth gravity. And the earth gravity goes up to about 40,000 kilometers per hour. 
40,000 kilometers per hour. That means anything that exceeds 40,000 kilometers per hour, eh? at a certain speed, at that speed, it can escape Earth gravity. Now, that, that one we we're talking about going into space. Now, when it comes to flying, there is a speed. When you reach that speed, the object must be lifted. So what did the Wright brothers do? The Wright brothers got engines. First of all, they got, they got the car engine. And they switched it on. And they began to turn it up 100 kilometers per hour. And it was moving, it was moving, it was moving, but it was not going up. It was, not in, it was shouting, but it was not, nothing was happening. They increased more, more speed. 300 kilometers, 400 kilometers. Now, when they reached the, the, those higher kilometers, they switched it on. When they switched it on, they saw it jumping in the air. Then they, from that day, they knew that planes can fly. They just had to convert the speed, build on, and then use the wings, try to put together, because it's all culminates to balancing. They, get, they balance the laws of gravity, the laws of aerodynamics. And within 500 kilometers per hour, they discovered that a plane can fly. Something can be lifted from the air. From that day, planes began to fly. Amen? That was a great discovery. You see planes flying and you think it's normal. It was not normal. It was not easy. People used to dream. People used to dream when they see birds flying. Say, eee, how can we also fly? How can someone be in the air? But they discovered that. And what they, they knew? That when speed increases, then the gravity will weaken. So if you want to weaken the gravity in your life or in your family, you have to increase speed in the things of God. Speed in prayer. Speed in seeking God. Intensify. The more speed you, do, you increase, the more the gravity will weaken. However heavy something is, you see that, that speaker is very heavy. But if it, speed is applied on it, it will just rise up like this. It will just jump in the air. Somebody say amen. amen. Lift up your hand and say, Jesus, teach me how to escape the gravity. So they began to build planes. From that day onwards, planes began to fly. Hmm? There is a law that always wants to pull you down where you are. Amen? Have you noticed that there is a law that wants to pull you down where you are? You have to escape gravitational pull in order to go up. So that's why you see even the planes, they build them runways. They build a runway. Why? Because the plane has to, has to increase speed until it reaches that speed where it can escape. And once it reaches that speed, you'll see it. Now, speed is coupled with the wings, the tilting of the wings, because there is a lot of physics now. Tilting of the wings, the lightness, the weight that, that the plane is carrying, all those things, when added together, they help the plane to fly. If a plane is not so heavy, that's why they don't use steel to build a plane. They don't use heavy duty metals. They use very light metals for the plane. And when they build a plane, they have to put wings. Because once there is too much speed, the wings are pushing against the force. And once there's, that force is being pushed, automatically the, 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 the thing will lift. So you have to discover and know that your condition is not permanent. Look at your neighbor and tell him your condition is not permanent. There is an escape velocity. There is an escape route. You can escape the gravitational force. You can escape that which the devil said in your family. You can escape in Jesus' mighty name. Somebody say amen. We won't take it again. Amen. Touch your neighbor and tell him we are going to escape. Say it again. We are going to escape. Amen? Yeah, believe God. Believe God and he's going to lift you. 
And then the final point I want to say is, when these Wright brothers built their plane, they did not launch it from there. They had to look for another location where there was proper wind. Everybody say proper wind. Shout it louder, say proper wind. Because they could not fly it from where they had built it. There was no wind. They had to look for another place where there is wind. A wind that will blow against their plane. So they had to move that aircraft, which they had built in a shop, a bicycle shop. They took it to a place where there was wind. Why do they need wind? Because when this wind comes against, comes against a moving plane, which is moving very fast, automatically the wind is going to lift this plane in the air. Look at your neighbor and tell him you need the wind. You need the wind. Everyone to succeed, you need the wind. And you must understand the season and the time when the wind blows. Amen? You need the wind. That wind is not any other wind. It is the wind of the Holy Spirit. Somebody say amen. Look at your neighbor and tell him there is nothing you can do without the Holy Spirit. There is nothing you can do without the Holy Spirit. Hmm? Success is all dependent on that wind. For the plane to fly, there has to be wind. Because that wind helps these wings to catch in it and then it goes up. Without the wind, the plane cannot fly. For you to propel out of your zones, you need the wind of God. For you to come out of the things that have tied your family, you need to, to inject yourself into the wind of the Holy Spirit. That wind will lift you up. It will break the gravitational force. It will break the powers of the ancestors in your family. It will break you out. Somebody say amen. amen. Lift up your hand and say, Jesus, I believe you. I am breaking out of gravitational force. Amen. 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 The timing is very important. The wind does not come at any time. There is always a timing of God. We have to learn the timing of God. Look at your neighbor. That go, tell him that God has your timing. Say it again. Say God has your timing. Every man and woman, God has prepared time when he's going to cause you to break through. Never miss that time. Because it will take you another, another rotation, another revolution to see that again. Every person, there is a time for you to break through. There is a time for you to escape the earth velocity. But if you are not in the right place at the right time with the right equipment, you will miss the wind of the Holy Spirit. Don't allow yourself to miss the wind of God. Amen? Look at your neighbor and tell him, don't miss the wind of God. Say it again, don't miss the wind of God. Everything works in time. Amen? If you do things out of time, they are going to be outdated. That's why I told you if Isaac Newton came back today with his laws of physics, he would be outdated because people are very far. If Colonel Sanders came back today, how many of us know Colonel Sanders? They don't know. Colonel Sanders is the man who discovered KFC, Kentucky Fried Chicken the most delicious chicken. But if he came back today, he would go broke. But when he began KFC, he became the richest man, one of the richest men in the world. Why would he become broke today? Because now his KFC is outdated. Everywhere people are complaining of junk food. You go in China, they complain of junk food. You go in America, ah, junk food. But the time when he was starting, it was the recipe. It was the del delicacy. Everyone was running for KFC. Every KFC was the talk of the nations. Nowadays when you travel, especially, you know for us in Uganda, we like chicken so much. So when you eat KFC, you like, eh, eh. You, you think it's your on top. You go outside. Talk about KFC. Everybody look at you. I have friends in Australia. They, are always, they always amuse me. They got a friend of mine where I stay. They, talk, they knew that I love KFC. So they wonder, ah, why does Pastor Edward love KFC? <laughs> How do you love that kind of food? So what they do, when they, they, knew, they, when they know that I'm coming, they will begin to gather coupons. You know, Outside they can give you coupons for free if you, like, you buy a lot. 
So they begin bring coupons to my friend. They say, my brother, we had Pastor Edward is coming. These are coupons for KFC. <laughs> <laughs> so they know me as KFC man because I liked it not knowing that the people I'm going I'm talking up with KFC they don't junk food so if Colonel Sanders was to come back today maybe he would have market in Uganda but not elsewhere But the problem with Uganda market, it cannot compete. Praise the Lord. So, the timing is very important. You cannot begin planning or preparing an army that is going to fight with the swords and spears in this generation. You are out of time. So that's why it's important when God gives you a time, strike that time because that time is the best. God will bless you. God will lift you. Everything is going to flourish. The Bible says he makes everything beautiful in its time. If you want to sow, you must learn to walk in the timing of God. Somebody say amen. Lift up your hand and say, Jesus, help me to know the times. Help me to understand the times. So I'm trying to encourage us to know that we must use our brains. We must use our minds to innovate. The world today is moving so fast. You should not live like in the 1930s. You should not live in the 1920s. Sometimes I look at people, when I look at some of these things, uh, some of our innovators in Uganda, and I say, really, God help us. And it becomes news in Uganda, really. That a car, he has made a car and it can make, hey, how are you? Yeah, buddy. And that is news. It is on NTV, it's on NBS, on everywhere. My goodness. The other day I was seeing again another story of a kid who has made a cause of Kamoro Kamobi wire. And he has somehow connected some wires and the thing is moving on its own. And it became news. Oh my God. What do the Japanese say when they look at us? Eh? Can you ask yourself that question? What do the Americans say when they look at it? TV is promoting. No wonder these guys, every time we go there, they say, Africa is still 200 years behind. They say, it, they say it very clearly without fear. Because we are still discovering cars. They are going to the moon. They want to create another earth. Lift up your hand and say, Jesus, help me not to live out of time. Do you really understand what I'm saying? Have you seen those kind of people they put on TV? You know? As if it's something very big. Why Why make it news? Praise the Lord. Yeah, so we need to move according to the timing of God. God has made everything beautiful in its time. Don't lose your time. When you lose your time, you'll become outdated. You'll come out on this nation and people will wonder. You think you are making news, yet you are, you are just to swaz up swaz. Somebody say amen. Can you imagine if somebody came back from the early 80s, 70s? You look at those Mufananis, dressed with those big hairs on the head, with bell bottom. And yet he's a man, and he's on top of the world. Imagine yourself coming back in this generation dressed like that. The other news, the Amorti news, everybody said the Amorti news. Yeah, I'll, I'll end here because of time. So, uh, my point is let's use our brains, let's discover, 
Let's discover. Tell your neighbor, discover. Eh? The power of transformation. The power of innovation. The power of exploration. That was our subtopic. Use your brain. God never made you an elephant. He never gave you defense in your weight. Neither your defense in your speed. Neither your defense in flying. But he put your defense in the brain. That's why you become the master of all nature. Amen. Lift up your hands. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We bless your name, Almighty God. We bow before your throne. We bless your name, Almighty God. We bow before your throne. We bless your name, Almighty God. We bow before, Lord, we bless your name, we bless your name, Almighty God. Before, Lord, we bless your name, we bless your name.
bless your people, a blessed one is here. I pray that you bless us as people are leaving the first service. Those who are watching us and have been on the first service, English service, bless them, oh God. We thank you, we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Lord, we 